Hello everyone, it's Shane Conto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I have my friend Matt Williams here with me to Hello, do guys. do our top ten video for films that were released in 2017. Let me see, Shane Eight. Thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for the, coming, Matt. Yeah, like this is it's been a really interesting year for movies. Uh, you know, behind the screen. I think like film theories and like things like that and like watching trailers and the lead up to films and like that eventual projects that's always as interesting hopefully less interesting but usually but it's as interesting as the movies and the movies themselves oh man dude 2017 it was a really interesting year it definitely was and there's some there's a lack of quality animated films this year which is kind of disappointing basically Coco's like hey I'm it and then Lego Batman, basically. And then there was a lot of great horror films this year, mm. which was surprising between Split, Get Out, It. And it was a big year for films like that. And just in general, superhero films had a great year this year as well, with basically all of them, at least in my opinion, being great, except for Justice League. Sorry. And, but... And honestly, it was a great year, and there's some fantastic award season films as well. There's obviously a lot of disappointments and big flops this year from box office perspective, but it was definitely an interesting year in film. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw out a couple of honorable mentions beforehand before jumping into our top ten. I'm going to let my guest Matt go first, and he'll give his number ten, then I'll give my number ten, and so on and so forth. Um, we'll chat a little bit about the films and... We'll just go at it and have a fun time talking about some movies, and hopefully you guys check in and watch this video and enjoy it. So, Matt, do you want to start with some of your honorable mentions? Honorable mentions. Uh, let's see, hopefully your subscriber base doesn't hate me already. my first time being on the show. Uh, so, I'll have to give it to Split. Fantastic film. Uh, really enjoyed that one. Yeah. Uh, Sham Hammer's back. Yeah, this is... it's. <laughs> He's got his own, like, uh, renaissance lately, I think. And it's going to be a shared universe, and Pat Oswalt, like, kind of helped this. Fantastic. Um, let me see. Next is It. I mean, box office says it. Uh, but also, it was just a fantastic film that I remember leading up to it, seeing, like, the Comic-Con stuff, and then, okay, this seems kind of weird. And then you watch the trailer, and it's like, this seems interesting. Yep. And or you'll float, too. You'll float too. And we all did. And we all floated too. We all did. Um, and hopefully <laughs> every single uh, child actor, including the one from uh, Stranger Things, hopefully they just, they just keep making more films. Mm -hmm. um, Homecoming. Homecoming did not make it on my top ten, but it is a fantastic film. Fantastic high school movie and a fantastic superhero movie. Absolutely best Spider-Man since Spider-Man 2 at least. Woo! It's been a while. Back, back, Venom, please be good. Um, let's see, what's next? What's next? We have three billboards. Three billboards. You're probably not happy that that's not on my. But it's we'll okay. we'll see where that lies. <laughs> let's see. Um, the next one is Blade Runner 2049. That was a very interesting movie because it it makes you think. Which I remember going into the first when i saw the first blade runner it was like wow this is really interesting it was like a like a like a rubik's cube watching mm -hmm. and then it happened again lightning did strike twice with a new director Ooh. villeneuve denis villeneuve yes and roger deakins absolutely i'm gonna i'm gonna stop spoiler alert i'll be talking about that a little bit more later but <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, let me see. My last honorable mention goes to My Friend Dahmer, which I hope more people watch. It was based on A, Jeffrey Dahmer, um, who was a serial killer, um, and also his his origin. So not so much the killings, but leading up to what happened. Family dynamics, and then high school life, leading up to his graduation. It was also based on a graphic novel of the same name. Uh, I recommend both if you have a stomach for it. It's not necessarily a horror movie, it's more of a thriller, but gotta give it up to that movie as well. Very nice. Yes. I've gotten to see all of them, except for my friend Dahmer, which I do want to get a chance to check out. 
I've reached almost 190 films from 2017. So, I watch a lot of movies, if you guys couldn't tell by all the videos that I post. But, uh, (laughs) but some of my honorable mentions, Colossal, which was an extremely unique film, hitting on the huge themes like depression and alcoholism and abusive relationships in such a creative way. Novitiate, which was about a nunnery, and that movie was intense, and Melissa Leo, like, scared the shit out of me, honestly, (laughs) with how powerful her performance in that was. If I had to pick my... So, my list is obviously what I really enjoy factors into this, but I did rank this based off of what I thought were the top ten best films. Even though this film has a bit too many flaws to get in my top ten, if I had to pick any film that I want to watch over and over and over again, absolutely, it's going to be Logan. Okay. And today, I do not look much like Logan, but I spend most of my life looking like it. Yes, I got a haircut and shaved off my beard. And I feel really cold, which is (laughs) odd. So, first haircut in six months, so... And then the last honorable mention I'm going to talk about is this movie, Ragnarok My World. Mm. Haha. And it, Thor Ragnarok, it was the most fun I had sitting in a theater this whole entire year. It made me so happy that they actually made a good Thor movie. And Taika Waititi, I absolutely loved him. And anything that he's going to make. So. so those are our honorable mentions. So Matt, if you'd like to begin with your number 10. All right. Drum roll commenced. Number ten goes to Train Spotting Two. Train Spotting Two was a Danny Boyle film. I thought it was fantastic. This movie. I saw the first one um, a few years ago, and I had to watch it again just to get ready for the sequel. Because for a second, I was thinking, I don't. It, the first one wrapped up so well, didn't really need to. This ju- This is one of those awesome sequels that it kind of justified itself. It took the story and all the characters in the ways that you would expect them to go, it went further. So so what I mean by that is the director and the writing and the actors never lost sight of the things that they were talking about and acting like 20 years ago. Actually, Mm -hmm. the film if you've seen the first film, it's like this it's like a meditation on a lot of stuff, like nationalism and... Uh, Heroin. And mostly <laughs> that. Mostly that. Um, some interesting songs, too. Um, and Got a lust for life. They did. They did. And then what happens after that lust for life? And it's like, wow, I'm in my 40s. This isn't good. I'm living like a teenager. It was, it was a fantastic movie. Not for um, the faintest of hearts, even from the opening scene, but... Mm-hmm fantastic film. I really recommend it. What I'd have to say is that it was one of the most unexpected sequels to be that great as it was. Mm. And also one of the most unexpected films to come out. Because I wasn't expecting to see another train spotting film and it came out and I rather enjoyed it a lot too. Mm. Yes. Now, my number 10, which I mentioned while Matt was talking about his honorable mentions, which I talk about a little more, is Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, and I'm a huge fan of Martin McDonough. I love In Bruges and Seven Psychopaths, and I was super excited, and this trailer sold me so hard on this film, and Frances McDormand honestly is the best she's ever been, and that's saying a lot because of Fargo and a lot of other films that she pops up in with directed and written by her husband, one of the Coen brothers, and she was fantastic. Woody Harrelson was great. Sam Rockwell was just completely nuts in this film. And damn, this, damn. this film pulls no punches or kicks, honestly. There's some crotch kicking in this film. And it goes places that you don't expect and hits you in all kinds of different ways. And it's so darkly funny and... <laughs> How the hell did this not get nominated for comedy at the Golden Globes when Get Out did? <laughs> that's that's one mystery I don't think we'll ever solve. But this, honestly, the acting is amazing. The writing is so sharp and cutting. This digs deep, this film. And 
whether what you say about how it deals with racism and stuff like that, I felt like this film hit like a sledgehammer, and you felt it, and it's a lasting experience. Just don't take your mom to go see this. <laughs> My mom was not a fan. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not recommended. Not the feel-good movie of the year. <laughs> or The Killing of the Sacred Deer. My mom did not like that movie either. And, yeah, don't yeah. take your mom to see that. Yeah, anyway, not, not. <laughs> number nine, Matt. Number nine, number nine. It goes to yeah. Itania. Yeah. Um, I recommend everybody uh, watch Actors on Actors, where Jake Gyllenhaal has a conversation with Margot Robbie. I was watching some of that. Yes. Yes. And yes. Go check out that YouTube channel, too, for variety, right? Yes. Yep. Um, Ch- shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let me see. I like Itania because of the same reasons that were discussed in uh, in the variety video. Margot Robbie can really act. Oh my god! Like there is not there shouldn't be a single doubt in anyone's mind that Wolf of Wall Street was some kind of fluke or anything like that. And she's really interesting and quirky in like a crazy kind of way in Suicide Squad. But wow, Itania. It makes, it makes you it makes you sad it makes, it makes, yeah. it makes you feel and I felt bad for her and I'm like she's a joke yeah th- this basically is, in American culture Tanya Harding's a joke yeah this this movie and movie makes you feel bad for being a part of the culture that made her into a joke because at the end of the day even after you know scandals go on you still real people that are yeah. living their life right now Tanya Harding is a real person um, who went through allegedly went through some pretty awful, awful things. I think that's one of the most interesting things about this movie is you don't know it's true or not. Very true. And that leaves it up to so many interpretations, but how the film took me was I empathized for her, and I was surprised after watching the film that I felt that way. Mm. Margaret Robbie's fantastic. Uh, Alvin Janey is fantastic. Supporting actress, actually, I supporting actress. She's gonna get it. But, uh, Either her or, or um, Lori Metcalf from uh, uh, Lady Bird. Lady Bird. Um, but no. But in the moms category, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a two mother race. Oh uh, man, but this mother is probably the one of the worst mothers that I've ever seen on film. She should definitely go to. She lunch. made her a champion. <laughs> In the worst way, by trial by fire. Uh, let me. I think she, she and the mother from Precious should uh, should go out for drinks and oh <laughs> They are awful. Oh, oh my. Yes. Um, but no, the movie is fantastic. I think um, even if you're not interested in um, ice skating or Olympics, or I, it, it's an excellent sports movie. It's an excellent biopic. Yeah. It's um, it's just also a really good movie if you want to you know to be an actor. I can't do what she did, what any of them did. It was almost like a documentary sometimes. Yeah, and that was one of the unique, cool things that they did with it was the different ways that they actually filmed it. Mm. Fantastic movie, fantastic movie. Thumbs up, thumbs up to them. Shane, man. Number nine, Call Me By Your Name, which, as of right now, is my most viewed review that I have on my channel, and counting. It's broke 350 views. woo but um, keep them coming. This, yeah. <laughs> this film is so unbelievably gorgeous. The cinematography is gorgeous. I want to live in this place. It's just like yes, this place is gorgeous. The performances are so unbelievably affecting. Timothy Chalamet. Hey, don't count him out against Gary Oldman or Daniel Day Lewis because this. He was so unbelievably powerful and captured that all that teen angst mm. and sexual tension that you get when you're going through the time where you're first having feelings for people and exploring. And he was just so powerful in this film. Army Hammer, which besides Social Network, I've never really been a big fan of Army Hammer. He sold me on this one because he was fantastic in this film. And then the man who is in literally everything, Michael Stuhlbarg. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure he's in like six movies this year. 
he was in the post, he was in this, he was in Shape of Water. Jumanji? Yeah, he was in there. Where? Was he in there? Oh, and I'm thinking of somebody else. Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> That's okay. There's three other movies he was in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> He's making his money. And mm-hmm. literally one scene, and I feel terrible because I don't remember the actress's name, but I love the actress who played the mother in that film as well. Mm-hmm. But this love story is so powerful, I can't honestly remember a whole lot of love stories that have felt more emotional and intense as this one, and everyone involved sold this. This was such a great film, and... I know some people are going to have problems with it because the elephant in the room involving this film, but please get over that and go enjoy a beautiful film because it was a beautiful romance and it was really powerful and there's moments where it just hit me really, really hard emotionally. And also make you never see Peaches the same way ever again. There we go. There we go. The second (laughs) elephant. And And there's my fun. And also probably the best uh, monologue to come out this year. Yes. It's uh, have a conversation with somebody about love and what does that mean and growing up and what does that mean. Hashtag dad talk. Yes. Yes. Probably he is the complete opposite of uh, Tanya's mom. I, Tanya's mom in the mm. parent category. It's all yes. thumbs up. Who's winning best parent in the 2017 Academy Awards? <laughs> <laughs> front runner. Um, I think Call Me By Your Name is very interesting to me because A, guys, please listen to that soundtrack. Fantastic. Yes, Fantastic. I have downloaded some of the songs on my Amazon music and Gosh. boy, does that make me feel. Oh my God. Yes. Um, Mystery of Love, is it? Mm-hmm. One of the songs? Yep. Uh, Visions of Gideon. Yeah. Uh, the ending, which, stay for the credits. Just just sit there and watch it. I'm watch, not sure what happens. Watch the acting go on. This this kid, he's I want to say in his early, very early twenties. I Jones. think he's like twenty-one, if I heard correctly. Fantastic, fantastic. Don't fact check me on that. Yeah, <laughs> actually, uh, Kaluuya, uh, the main the main actor from uh, Get Out, actually introduced him on Actors on Actors. I for, saw uh, that too. Yeah. <laughs> There's another shameless plug for you, Variety YouTube channel. That's <laughs> just <laughs> this guy. Um, but uh, yes, no, fantastic movie. Call me by your name. I think. Um, I think a lot of people are watching it. Am I most positive, right? How's it doing in the box office? I'm most positive. Um, it, it's definitely not making Lady Bird money. Okay. Out of all the um, indies, out of the indie award season films, I'm pretty sure the one that's really making the most money is Lady Bird, and then Three Billboards is up there too. Oh, okay. Like you have The Post, which is award season film, but it's not an indie film. It's freaking Steven Spielberg, mm-hmm. and that. Might wind up being the number four film at the box office this weekend. Okay. Twelve, okay. twelve strong, and Den Den of Thieves are making more money than I thought they would. <laughs> I thought Jumanji was going to make a, another one at the box office, but that's another video. <laughs> I love math and numbers, so. And yeah. I'm going to stop this at that. Matt, what's your number eight? <laughs> there we go. Call me by your name, though. Seriously, guys, watch it. I don't. No matter what you think of. Any of the the premise of the movie, just just watch it and watch it just kind of kind of shatter everything that you thought. Uh, let's see. Above I Tie for my number eight is the Myrich Stories. Um, Go get a Netflix account. Ah uh, yeah. Or somebody else's username and password. Yeah, please everybody <laughs> do so. Um, Myrich Story is a very interesting movie because basically you have all these actors. It's a Noah Baumbach, right? Yes. Uh, Mr. Greta Gerwig. Yes, he, um, oh, yeah. um, let's see, what it does is that it has all these really awesome actors, and basically what this movie says, I need you to act as well as you possibly can, and it's weird because two of the, uh, two of the actors, uh, Ben Stiller, a lot of people know him mostly for, like, comedic th- things, yeah. and then you have, uh, Adam Sandler, Obviously. Hello, Schwan. Yeah, like, he, like yeah. he and Netflix also have like some kind of partnership, and he is making. Go watch Ridiculous Six. He, he's making and then make a top ten worst films ever. Yes, like, <laughs> uh, mm. <laughs> but this movie, this movie is a fantastic movie. A, um, I like psychology and family and family dynamics. 
So if you have like very uh, awful Thanksgivings, watch this movie and uh, feel not alone so much. I think I think this movie does excellently is have a conversation with people about generations and things that aren't said and finally just explode. Almost every single person in this movie has so much rage pent up and they figure, ah, I feel like now I have to, I have a voice. And it gets messy. It does. And between Dustin Hoffman, Adam Sandler, Ben Stiller, mm. like Adam Driver pops up for like a hot second. Which is like, oh, he was in this movie. Mm. And oh, yeah. it's just, it's a really powerful cast, and it's a lot of great acting, great writing. This honestly actually made my top 15, mm. which is saying a lot for a Netflix film, because to be perfectly honest, a lot of them are crap. <laughs> but this one really stands out, and this is definitely going to be up there along with stuff like Beast, um, Beast of No Nation, Mm. And other films that hopefully will be coming out from Netflix that are legitimate, strong contenders. And Amazon's already well past that point. Amazon's producing some great films, but it's nice seeing Netflix putting out some great films as well. The number two favorite monologue of the year for me is when Ben Stiller gets up and shares some things that are on his chest in public in that mm. film uh, towards the end. Fantastic movie. And Best Matt movie. really likes Ben Stiller. Apparently. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> now, my number eight, which I... It's interesting for me having a foreign language film in my top ten. And I'm going to be that guy and say that I don't really like reading subtitles. And it's because I feel like it distracts me from actually watching what's going on on the screen and me having to pay attention to, like, especially very wordy Mm -hmm. foreign language films and this is a Norwegian film called Thelma and I heard great reviews about it and this is a superpowers movie set in a very interesting way and this is about a young woman who has these very intense powers and doesn't know how to handle them and her falling in love with another young woman at school and as Matt writes this down, because I don't think Matt saw this. I did but not, but I will. <laughs> he should. From the start of this film, there is a very unsettling opening scene to this that you're like, what the hell's going on here? And then once this movie kicks into gear, it takes you some places with some very intense scenes. There's some scenes that are really unnerving in this film. And also, the love story between this young woman and her classmate is so intense and there's such great tension in it and it really builds it up and when I really enjoy these odd takes on basically like the idea of superpowers you have things like Chronicle you have things like Unbreakable and then you have things like this and if you haven't heard of Thelma please go check it out it is a really awesome film and it's gorgeous and the cinematography some of the choices with the shots it's very interesting and there's this film will take you to some places. Okay. Well, that's all I'm gonna say because it's worth a watch. Okay, okay, I will definitely check it out. The moment that he said uh, superpowers, uh, that was all. Like, what? Um, it was sounding sounding very close to Akira, which that that's oh the worst. yes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm definitely. Take what TT please make that. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me see. So, on top of my stories, the only kids movie on my list, Wonder. Hit me in the fields! Wonder's a fantastic movie, fantastic book, no matter, even if you were an adult. Um, I think Wonder was an interesting movie. Well, let me tell you what it's about. Uh, a little boy who has a facial deformity is going for his first year, I think, fifth grade, sixth grade? He's going into school for the first time ever because he's been homeschooled his entire life after uh, many surgeries and he is obviously afraid and he has a right to be because when he gets to school um the bullying issue is rampant and what it does is make you a aware of some very interesting things like kid culture kids are mean never Holy forget shit. never forget that kids are definitely mean um sometimes adults are mean 
Oh, God, there's one scene in this film where I wanted to jump through and punch some parents in the face. Yes. Legitimately, they made me that angry. Yes, the... Actually, yeah, the second worst mom of the year, actually. Second worst mom. Watch for that scene. Very that, that's going to be another video. We'll have another <laughs> countdown of best and worst parents in film in 2017. <laughs> a lot of therapy that needs to happen yeah. after the credits roll. And now, quick question. Were you also a 20-something-year-old guy sitting by yourself watching this in the theater? Because <laughs> I was. I went by myself and was surrounded by, like, kids and families and stuff, and I'm like, I can see this movie, too. Don't yeah. judge me. <laughs> I helped with that $125 million this movie's made. <laughs> this movie is killing it. I, I don't know, would you consider it like a sleeper hit? I didn't think I, it was going to make... I didn't think it was going to make this much money or have legs like this, but it really is taking advantage of the holidays and stuff like this and The Greatest Showman, which gave it a C plus as a movie, but like A as enjoyment, because I did really love watching that film. Mm. They're making bank. And Jumanji. <laughs> I've seen that twice. Yeah. <laughs> but now, um, Wonder One is a great movie, great book, great adaptation. Uh, it's a very interesting Star Wars cameo mm -hmm. in that movie. And it's probably out of all the movies that, uh, that I listed on my top ten, it probably has one of the best, actually has a few messages, probably one of the best messages, which is inner beauty is so much more important than outer beauty, and that sounds cheesy. Um, it sounds cheesy and cliche, and like we've been hearing, we've been kind of like seeing that and on TV and in film since like Twilight Zone, Beauty and, and the Beast, and Twilight, Beauty and <laughs> the Beast. But um, the tale is old as time. I mean, we got to keep telling it though, because man, I feel like people just keep forgetting it every every few minutes actually not yeah, even, not even, yeah. <laughs> people could be really crappy they should go watch this movie and then realize how crappy they're acting and then because it one of my biggest surprises about this film is i didn't think we'd get this much perspective from the other family members mm. i loved what it did with the sister when she I, said he um he's so big it almost there's not enough room for me in my own house oh god that Awful, 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 awful. And everybody wants Owen Wilson as a cat. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Um, speaking of Star Wars, speaking and of Owen Wilson. Wilson. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Wonder, wonder. It's, it's a wonder why that movie is so good, but it was. It really was. That was definitely one of the biggest surprises. Of like, this is a great film. Holy crap. Mm. I hope you watch it. Okay, Shane. My number seven, not quite a kid's movie, it's about a teenager, called Lady Bird. And I'll have to, I will keep my gushing over Sarah Sharonin to a minimum in this video because I absolutely love her and adore her. And if I ever met her, I'd probably get down on my knee and propose to her on the spot. There we go. There and we go. I, want, I just want to listen to her talk because I love her Irish accent. But anyway, I'm going to stop being creepy and talk about this movie. Now, <laughs> Greta Gerwig did such a fantastic job of writing and directing this film. And if it wasn't for, honestly, if it wasn't for Spielberg, Ridley Scott being like that, those big names, she would have been nominated for Best Director at the Golden Globes. Mm -hmm. And I really hope she gets nominated at the Oscars. And I'd be okay if Ridley Scott and Steven Spielberg don't get nominated, so her and someone else we'll be talking about soon. Jordan Peele get nominated. Mm -hmm. Greg Gerwig, this was fantastically written, fantastically directed. Sarah Sharona was so fantastic, and her and Margot Robbie are my two favorites for Best Actress this year. Mm -hmm. And, sorry, Frances McDormand, you're up there too. But <laughs> I just thought that Sarah Sharona was so believable in this role and really brought layers, and just the whole cast in general, because you have... You know who keeps popping up in things recently and I never knew they exist is Tracy Letts, who plays the dad. Uh -huh. He was also in The Post. He was also in a film called Lovers that came out this year. And I just really, really enjoy what he brings to film. And Lord Metcalf, who plays her mom, is fantastic. I think one of the most endearing real moments in this film is when they are getting in this fight at a, sh like a clothes store. And they're like, this 
and like out of nowhere they're just like oh my god this dress is so cute yeah. and it's just like those real moments I'm just like this it felt so authentic and I felt like the emotion of this film and where this young woman goes is so believable and so interesting and you have Timothy Chalamet pop up in this I hate this character so much it's just like I don't believe in money you know, freaking anarchist. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lucas Hedges, I thought, yes. was really good in this, yes. too, in the small amount that he was in it. Everybody had layers, mm. honestly. And this was a real. This was one of the most well-rounded films of this whole entire year. And I really loved it, and I love Sarah Sharon, and that's all I'm going to say. Well, there we go. We'll be talking about that a little bit more, also, mm-hmm. because that's on my list as well. A little bit higher, though. Um... My number six has to go to the Florida Project. Oh, man. This movie, basically what it is, it's as close to a documentary as you can possibly get, but it still be a scripted narrative. Mm -hmm. This movie has some of the most realistic actors, most of them children, um, playing... Brooklyn Prince, is it? Plays a little girl? Ah, yes, yes. Oh, my God. Um, she's I th- not the nicest little girl, but <laughs> actually she's very mm, honestly a great year for young <laughs> act child actors. Yes, yes. You know what I'm talking about, Logan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, but this movie was fantastic. I thought that there were a couple mo- uh, scenes that were very, very hard to watch because this movie, like, oh, it's still going back to the documentary aspect. It's very real and unflinching, and some movies. They kind of hint at things, or they take the camera and they move it away slightly. There's one scene in particular, I'm not going to spoil it, but you remember when uh, that lady knocks on, the uh, little girl's mother knocks on the door and pays Ooh, another character oh my God. a visit? Mm-hmm. Very interesting, very interesting. Mm-hmm. One of the little boy. I think the way this movie shines is the fact that it is so real, and it's almost kind of like... If you don't get it, it feels like it's meandering and it's not really going anywhere. It's one of those, what was the point of this movie? If you really don't connect with it, you're like, why did I just spend this time watching this? Yeah, but it, um, shout out to all the hardcore uh, Hey Arnold fans. The journey is a destination, man. Because mm. the journey was a destination. It was, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, it was, a, it was a fantastic movie, I think. I think way more people need to watch it. Yes. Willem Dafoe is fantastic. Yes. He has one of uh, one of the most funny and awkward moments that come out this year with the uh, the uninvited person. Oh, uninvited guest to your motel. Yeah, he uh, uh, Willem Dafoe is kind of like the he's, uh, the, he's the manager yeah, of manager. this motel, and mm. honestly, one of the best performances he's ever given. And if it wasn't for Sam Rockwell, he would be a shoe win for Best Supporting Actor. Yes. It looks like for this year. Which, God, that, uh, that category is a freaking nightmare every year because there's so many. Patrick Stewart. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, um... No, a great, great movie, great movie. It, um, it juggled so many characters so well. I don't think a lot of, a lot of movies do that. A really good mm-hmm. example of... Um, movies that don't do that, let's say Suicide Squad. You have an amount of characters... You put in the comments, we're paid by Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Plug. Um, let's see, I watch, rewatch that movie again and kind of ask yourself whether or not you understand all of the motivations and the backstories, or even if you care, if you feel like they build up like tension and things like that on an individual level to then build up the movie as a whole it doesn't really who the hell is Slipknot who is that doesn't matter he dies 20 minutes in or so um but this movie (laughs) this movie doesn't do that it it kind of it sets it gives how do I put this it gives fulfillment to everything that it sets up it kind of closes all of the uh tiny little side stories because almost every character has their own little side story and things that are going on and it um, it deserves it deserves all of like the the praise that it's gotten. Actually, not enough. It needs more. It needs more. The more power. Oh. 
There we go. There we go. And now for my number six, I, Tanya. So I'm going to keep this condensed since we already talked about it, but here's a few things. Margot Robbie acting to a mirror. My God, one of the best pieces of acting this whole entire year. That hit me so hard. Winter Soldier, Sebastian Stan. Holy crap. Mm. I haven't seen him much outside of the MCU, and boy was he amazing in this film. Allison Janney, just give her her Oscar. Yes. And the way this film was put together with the documentary and breaking the fourth wall. My God. Deadpool, you have a rival in mm -hmm. Tanya Harding, and who can break the fourth wall better? Because <laughs> that was used in such an amazingly creative and funny way, and that was something really special about this film. I laughed from start to finish. This movie made me feel really hard, and this was just such a fantastically put together film. And I never thought I wanted to watch figure skating until I got to watch Tanya Harding figure skate to ZZ Top. Yes. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> and one last thing about I, Tanya. If you're going into the movie thinking that the, probably the only cool thing about it is uh, the, Carrigan, the Carrigan incident, uh, that is 100% not true. It is in there, and they do talk about it in detail. Oh, oh my God. But, and, that, and that scene is crazy. Uh, <laughs> you put your head through glass crazy. Idiots. <laughs> the, they're some of the dumbest human beings I have ever seen in this movie. <laughs> and number one is their the husband, like Sebastian Stan's friend, who thinks he is some kind of spy. Mm. Oh, I don't know no uh, Tony Harden. Yes. That guy is hilarious and almost steals this movie. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. But number... Uh, five? Yes, we are at number five. I know how to count. I'm a math professor. There we go. There we I go. teach on Monday. <laughs> uh, my next one is Lady Bird, so I'll kind of truncate this as well. Lady Bird is a very interesting movie because it is funny, it is sad, it is set in a time period, uh, 2003, right? 2003? Right somewhere after, around there. Yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. Um, and it reminds you that of that with the music and the current events that are going on playing on the screens of TVs and things like that and the conversation that people are having. That was actually really interesting because they could have like made it for today, but yeah. why not make something different? Um, I like this movie. Kind of basically every single thing that Shane said. All the actors are top notch. I think that it is definitely deserving of all the things that it, that is going on. I think all the things. Yeah, all of it. All everybody needs to keep making more movies. Chalamet. I saw um, this uh, this list of the top ten actors to watch for 2018 and moving forward. Please watch that kid. Fantastic. He has a very 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 tiny role in Hostels as well. Okay. Christian Bale. I love that film. Mm. Another random, like, hey, check that one out. Yeah. Wide release next week. They're really pushing it with this. Okay. Like, hey, we come out in December. Now you know. <laughs> oh, man. Not bitter that I had to wait a whole entire month to see Phantom Thread yesterday. Oh, yes. Phantom Thread. I have to Which that myself. review will be filmed tomorrow and coming to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. In between when I'm working. Because I got work like 9 to 3 tomorrow. <laughs> Start of the uh, semester. Yay! Um, welcome back. Welcome. To school. <laughs> but yeah, fantastic movie, Lady Bird. Uh, guys, just, just please watch it. It's great. Alrighty. So my number five. I never, ever, 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 ever thought I would have a top ten list of a year in film and actually have a horror film in it. Because <laughs> they scared the shit out of me. There you go. And this film scared the shit out of me in so many different ways. Get out. Oh my god. Jordan Peele, I love you. And I don't... It, honestly, saying this off the cuff right now, if that doesn't win most original, best original screenplay, I'm gonna kind of be pissed. Because the way that this film comes together, balancing horror 
and comedy because you know it was nominated for best comedy or is it a musical you'll have to go and find out mm. and this film things and so many messages because you can watch this film as just a horror film and just take it like it is or you could pull back the layers like onions have layers and realize that this is one of the hardest hitting thematic films of the year on so many different levels and Danny Kaluuya, oh my god, I just I just started watching Black Mirror, and he has an episode of that. Oh my god, that show, mm, like, destroys your brain. You like, see them? Like, <laughs> so, watch it on Netflix. But Daniel Kaluuya was amazing in this film. Allison Williams, right, plays mm-hmm. the... Ah, uh, yes. The, oh, man. Love and, interest. Yes. And Bradley <laughs> Whitford... Uh, who, up until very recently, I just remember as being that shitbag from Billy Madison that I hate so much. Business ethics. Mm. Oh my god, is he a great actor. Yes. Oh shit. Yes. I never realized it. But he is so fantastic, and you know, he would have voted Obama for a third term. He would have. He, he would have. And Catherine Keener, oh my <laughs> god. So great in this film as well. And the way this is shot, and some of the imagery is so impactful, and this film makes you really think about stuff, Mm. and how you see other people, and your perspective on people that are not the same as you, as you watch this video and see what's going on here, and realizing that this film should be watched by literally everyone, and... I think one of my favorite things is Lil Rel. Hmm. I don't remember his last name, but oh my god, is he hilarious in this. All I have to see is say is T.S. Mother F and A. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. And boy, does this movie pull the rug out from under you and really take you to some places. And this film could... the How this movie wraps up is so amazing. It hits so hard and had one of the best... Yeah, moments of the whole entire year. Hmm. Um. It was all right. No. I'm uh, <laughs> Spoiler was, alert! I think he's going to be talking about it too. Uh, it, it's it's higher it, it's higher on my list, so I don't want to gush over it yet. But what I do want to say is a uh, uh, fantastic film. Uh, I think. As you peel peel back the layers, watch the movie twice. So it's one of those movies we almost have to watch twice what you also need to do is look up uh the social commentary that was very very intentional uh in making this film like things like the sunken place and uh the idea of staying woke versus being asleep or being hypnotized um ding yes yes um also so many excellent memes you guys remember when all the memes came out (laughs) um so probably one of the best memes is when uh, this this guy uh, this guy uh, tells his girlfriend, "No, I don't really feel like uh, going. I don't really feel like going shopping." And then she takes out a teacup and she starts. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go." God. Uh, no, but this movie. Oh. I'll get to why I like this movie in a, in a bit. But yeah, no, great movie, great movie, mm-hmm. Shane, great movie. Uh, let's see. So on top of Lady Bird, we have a very different movie. We have Logan. Logan was, and and is, um, at least right now anyway, an end of an era. Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman do um, not want to make these I movies again. Cried. But what they decided to do, yes, what they decided to do was to give it the best, to give all of us the best goodbye. This movie is fantastic. The superhero movie... It's a movie about aging, it's a movie about regret, it's a movie about newness and and youth and moving forward with your life. So it's not only depressing, but it's also simultaneously hopeful. I think I think what this movie does the probably the best is puts a bow tie like a, almost like a like a cherry on top of every single thing that Brian Singer did back in the year 2000. Wow, 17 been... years old. Yes, this that movie that movie was fantastic. It started the year off 
really well. Was it? it came out in March. Or something? March. Yeah. yeah. And um, Get Out came out in like February. Yes. Yes. This is a great year. Like stretched all the way out. Quality. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. 2018. Yeah. You better bring it. Yeah. You have some shoes to fill. But no, Logan. Logan's fantastic movie. If you if you end up getting the the Blu-ray or DVD, uh, you can watch Logan it in black and white. Yes, I haven't what? watched it yet. It is. I yeah, <laughs> it's really cool to watch. It. So excited! Oh man, what yeah. do you think about Logan? I know you. I know you kind of sort of like superhero movies, and you like. <laughs> uh, so, honestly, I literally just changed. Because I keep track on an Excel spreadsheet because I have a master's in accounting and of course I use Excel all the time. And of all the films that I've seen each year, starting in 2016 when I really started doing this, and this is, it's now my top 15. It's been moving up because it just keeps sitting with me and keeps improving in my head. Mm. At first I'm like, I didn't like the villains. There were some things that I didn't like about it. And I think once that washed away, the second time I watched it, I'm like, I'm in love with this film. And I want to watch it so bad again. I just love this film. And to cheat off of Matt, because this is actually on his list, but I need to say this. I, if I have to pick any superhero films, it's not the MCU. It's the X-Men. Mm. I've been an X-Men fan since I was nine years old when that first film came out. Ooh. And Wolverine is my favorite superhero. My favorite comic book character. However you want to... Don't semantics me in the comments, please. And... And if you guys watched any of my videos or followed my Instagram, you've seen that I sculpt my facial hair like Wolverine. And Hugh Jackman, honestly, is my film idol. And watching this finally come to an end that has made up two-thirds of my life mm. it was so powerful and so moving. And I cried in the theater by the time this film ended. And I am also love westerns. I'm a genre film kind of person, and right, right. this is one of the most amazing modern westerns ever made. And that moment, because my I'm named after the western Shane, mm. and the moment that they start watching Shane in this movie, I'm like, there's a Wolverine movie based off of Shane, and I I literally walked in my undergrad graduation with Wolverine mutton chops. Because I wanted to end college how I lived it, as Ryder University's campus Wolverine. <laughs> and uh, this film, when it's mixing the Western and. God, I wish that Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart would get the recognition they deserve. Because honestly, if I could give it to anybody, and spoiler alert to my wa second annual Wasteland Reviewer Awards, which should be. Coming shortly, Hugh Jackman deserves that Oscar for Best Actor mm. for this film. Not Greatest Showman. This film. And, God, I love this movie. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Logan, Logan, fantastic movie. Fantastic movie. I hope uh, hope Deadpool kind of works his magic and gets Wolverine. Um, well, Sebastian Stan's trying to convince Hugh Jackman to come back okay. to the MCU. And so is Chris Hemsworth. So... Which, I would love and hate that at the same time. And I'm going to say why is, this was too good of a yeah. finale. And I don't want to see, like, I would love to see Hugh Jackman still. But honestly, from my opinion, I think they should just redo everything when they come to the MCU. I don't think they should bring cast over and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. X-Men had their time at Fox in this universe. And Hugh Jackman deserves to move on. He did this for 16 years. And how many goddamn films has he popped up in as Wolverine? Whether it's a one 
seen cameo of telling them to go F themselves and stealing all of first class in that one scene. But <laughs> I'm gonna digress because this isn't about this isn't a review for Logan, but I had to go off on my little tangent. Now my number four, which honestly this is probably the most outside the well besides Thelma because I don't think most people have seen it. But most outside the box pick for my top ten and this film really hits hard for me because besides Westerns, sci fi is my favorite genre. And I've watched Planet of the Apes since I was a kid. And Charlton Heston is still my favorite actor. Get your filthy paws off of me, you damn dirty apes! Yep. You maniacs! You blew it up! <laughs> I'll stop. Now, War for the Planet of the Apes was the perfect conclusion to this new Planet of the Apes trilogy. And... Honestly, one of my favorite actors now is Andy Serkis, mm. and he's getting there. I love him popping up, say, in Star Wars, or I can't wait to see more of Claw in Black Panther. Yes. 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 And he makes an ape more human than human. And the special effects in this film are unbelievable, and if this film doesn't win for visual effects, I will flip a shit watching the Academy Awards this year because these are real animals. They look like real animals. Mm -hmm. And there were two parts in this film that my jaw dropped and my heart clenched. And that's, Matt Reeves is such an amazing director. There is some of the most gorgeous filmmaking this year in this film. And there's a re uh, reconnaissance mission and like super stealthy mission of the humans into the apes home and that whole sequence was holy crap this and then Steve Zahn when the hell has anybody ever said Steve Zahn's a great actor bad ape bad ape was amazing <laughs> in this Woody Harrelson has had a year because I didn't talk much about him when I talked about three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, but he was amazing in that film. He was amazing in this film. And screw the expectations of people being pissed that this really wasn't a war movie. It really wasn't. It was an amazing film, though. And honestly, probably somebody should have talked about the titles of these three Play of the Apes movies better. <laughs> Could have a whole conversation on which order they should have been in. Dawn probably should have been more for the play of the eight. Yeah. And honestly, this is probably should have been Rise. Mm. And the original should have been Dawn. But not let's not get into semantics here. But and Maurice is one of my favorite side characters in any film this year. Yes. And this film, by the end, hits so hard and is a perfect tying of the bow of how this trilogy should have ended, which it probably is ending and no other films are probably going to be made because this didn't make a whole lot of money and it was really stupid for them to put this out right after Spider-Man Homecoming came out. Because mm. this isn't a summer blockbuster kind of film. This franchise isn't a summer blockbuster kind of franchise. Honestly, this should come out September, October when it's still time where you can have a franchise film like this come out mm -hmm. but it's more serious this is a lot more serious than say any of the mcu films this is dark and gritty and andy circus should get a nomination someday god damn it for doing his motion capture work i thought it was a fantastic movie uh i i teared up twice uh and i'd probably no, those same two scenes. Yes, uh, I won't say the second second scene because it, it's a spoiler. But I'll say the first scene uh, that made me made me tear up when see something happens to Caesar and he's talking to another one of his pals um, about to be about to set off on a journey into doing you know, what he has to do, the war, I suppose. Um, and one of his pals. Uh, leaves with him and says, I want to go with you for a specific reason. Um, that was that was fantastic. A movie that has so little, I guess, human characters um, makes you A, root for the apes? Yeah. Over the I wanted them to win. Yeah. Um, and then what that movie did, 
was it it was it was so how do I put this? Well, I don't want to say without spoiling, but there's there's something going on throughout the whole movie. You don't really understand it until the very end because you, you have to you have to be really you have to keep watching. It's like, oh, this is happening. Oh, that's what's going on. And like they do make another movie after this. Also, wait, pause. Matt Reeves doing Batman, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yes. Mm. I well, hope that happens. Yeah. <laughs> But if they do not make another movie uh, after this, it would be really interesting to watch, especially yeah. because of the choices that this movie makes. What this film, this trilogy, is one of... It's so weird, because it's a remake own series of an original film series, and it blows the original film series out of the water. Mm. I would probably... P- I would probably pick. I would probably put the original Planet of the Apes film a little above Rise, mm-hmm. but Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes are the best two films made in this franchise, and then like the four other made-for-TV like movies mm-hmm. that followed uh, Planet of the Apes, and just it's a marvel. This is one of the best trilogies ever made. It has something to say. Yes. Uh, don't don't let the trailers or the gunfire. Uh, for you, this movie, all the movies have something very important and relevant to it's say. A, great science fiction is bringing those things to the forefront. You could have the big dumb science fiction like Transformers and stuff like that that doesn't really have anything to say, or you could have things like this, or like Ex Machina, yes, or something else I'm going to be talking about soon. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave it at that. Well, we're up to our top three. So, what's your number three, Matt? Number three, number three. Ah, so let's see. Is it? it so both of our number threes ah, yeah, is okay. the same film. So we're going to openly talk about this. I'll let you go first. So I uh, I had to give my number three to The Shape of Water. Yes. Daniel Del Toro's Shape of Water. I thought this movie was very interesting because when you explain the movie to your, your friends after you watch the trailer, you see the movie and talk to people that don't know too much about it. It's like, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's that movie that has like that lady that's in love, in love with, with the this, fish guy. Yeah, the, the, the fish my mom saw this trailer was like, it's so weird. Yeah, <laughs> which it is, because it is a Guillermo del Toro movie, and let's not let's not kid ourselves. If it wasn't weird, then he really didn't make it. The man loves monsters. Watch his um, oh, watch his uh, uh, Golden Google, Globes. Oh my gosh! Stage. Yes, uh, please watch that. That that's fantastic. But time he, to plug some more YouTube channels. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be on this stuff. Um, dropping jewels here, <laughs> but no, <laughs> no. This movie, this movie is a lot more has to uh, has to say a lot more than just this lady that's in love with the fish man. It's I don't want to sound pretentious, but it is it is about love and finding love, and it's also oh man, wait, let, 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 let's let's like peel back layers here. It is a movie about unconventional love, which is on itself interesting because it's different. And then this movie is set in a time period. Mm. It has other characters that are in in conventional situations that are not acceptable by society. Yes, and then it has other characters that are like really on the periphery, like like two second characters, but they serve to show like a wider context for the overall story, which is kind of like a message that kind of filters back into the main story. Which is hate is wrong. Yeah. Who knew? Hate hate is wrong. <laughs> but this movie this movie made my number three because this it was fantastic. I've seen most of Gamma Del Toro's work. Uh, now I have to add something very special and relevant yeah. to why we are sitting here together. Mm. So we've known each other since our first semester of college. So we met September two thousand ten. Woo! Woo-woo. 17 years old. Now, one of, the, <laughs> one of the things that made us really click was we met in Alternative Films Club at Ryder University. Mm-hmm. And Matt here decided to do a special film series. Mm-hmm. Did Let the Right One In. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And Guillermo del Toro's Devil's Backbone. Yeah, foreign language films. They are awesome. Which was my first ever Guillermo del Toro film. Oh, okay. And we bonded over that, and I love that film. I own it now. 
and in my very large DVD and Blu-ray collection, which Matt can attest because he's actually seen it. And the Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> yes, I keep track of all of them. <laughs> um, and this is really special for both of us because kind of Guillermo del Toro film kind of like brought us together. And, and May. Do you remember that one? And oh, 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 my. Recommended. I found go, go check that out. It's called May. I'm not going to say anything else. And yeah, nope. Yeah. But this, honestly, ah, might be my favorite Guillermo del Toro film. Hmm. Over Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah, this is a tough one, but... Along with all of the things that Matt has said, which I'll leave him talk about the social commentary and everything, this film is beautiful. Alessandra Desplat, his score is magnificent. And honestly will probably win at the Academy Award for Best Original Score. The music is gorgeous. This is one of the most charming things I've ever seen in any film this year. There's so much charm in this film, and my own personal, well, besides Patrick Stewart, because I'm extremely biased, but out of the real contenders this year for Best Supporting Actor, I want Richard Jenkins to win so bad. Mm. He was so charming and lovable in this film, and there's just a moment of them connecting because of film. Mm. And the two of them sitting watching a musical and sitting on the couch doing like the all the foot movements to the dance going on in the film and that was one of the most charming things i've seen in a film this whole entire year yes and i loved it and this movie is brutal when it needs to be yeah and it's not it this movie is gory when it needs to be and when it's important to me and it's not like Which it is. yeah the and not in the least and the cast sally hawkins I feel so bad because there's so many great... She's going to be overshadowed in the Best Actress category this year, but she was amazing. She really was. Octavia Spencer, you give her another Best Supporting Actress nomination because literally everything... She's going to be the new Meryl Streep. <laughs> everything she's in, she's getting Best Supporting Actress for. And I also mentioned Richard Jenkins. Michael Stuhlbarg does a really good job in this film, too, and he probably gets overshadowed by some of the other performances in this film, and I'm going to get real biased real quick on this one, because one of my favorite actors right now is Michael Shannon. Okay. And I thought he definitely should have been a big contender for Best Supporting Actor last year for um, Nocturnal Animals, and I think he's amazing. In this film, I didn't... I don't know a whole lot of completely scum like scummy villains in re films this year that I felt connected to and for some reason you understand on some level where this guy's coming from and on some other levels you have no idea what the hell's running through his head and I think that's one of the most powerful things about what he brings to this film all the characters in this are so fantastic and it's gorgeous I think it's Dan Lawson. I don't know if I got his first name right, but the DP, the cinematographer in this, oh, this film's gorgeous. Uh, okay, so only the last thing that I'll say about Shape of Water is the fact, A, everyone go on Spotify or YouTube right now and look up the song called La Jevenez. It's French. Yes. It's um, the song that they use, A, in the movie, and it's very interesting scene but yeah also, but, but, but it's also the, the scene that all you probably are thinking about when you watch the trailer is it gonna happen yeah it happened. yeah <laughs> sorry spoiler but i think you could have figured that out but yeah <laughs> but also the song in the they use in the trailer uh it's a very Gorgeous. soft and beautiful song very maybe not a soft movie a very beautiful one yeah um uh, any about the commentary, the social commentary, it, it, has, it has a lot to say. It's deeply thematic, and I think that's really significant, and I'm looking at my top ten, and so many of them are really, because that's what makes a, that's what takes a great, great, a uh, great movie and makes a great film. Mm -hmm. I feel like it, you can make something that's technically fantastic, and on some level, you need to push it a little bit further, which here's a perfect example because I love Mad Max. 
So you have the Road Warrior, which doesn't dig too deep thematically. Mm. It's still an amazing action film. And then you have something like Fury Road, which most people probably don't think is super deep. But when you pull back the layers to what it's saying about society and all kinds of like gender roles and stuff like that, that movie is so richly deep. It puts it on such a different level than most action films. Mm. And just calling it an action film is kind of doing a bit of a disservice. And that's what makes up a lot of our films is they really hit on a deeper level. And this film really makes you understand where people come from and what drive. Because Michael Shannon's character is really religious. Yes. And that comes into play. And him... It comes into play in some very interesting moments. And I think that kind of shit... And he kind of projects our society at that point. Yes. And... In the 60s, guys. Yeah. That's really shaping how people feel about particular characters in this film. Mm. And I think that's a really powerful thing that... Sometimes you have to take a step back and really think about stuff and put it in a bigger perspective. It definitely has a different lot to say. Not all of it kind or or easy. A lot, a lot of yeah. a lot of scary pills to swallow. Humans are monsters, mm-hmm. and again, that's the second that's the second thing that I've said in during this review that sounds really corny or you feel like you've seen it before, but when it plays out on screen, you watch. It's almost like watching Game of Thrones. Like people are just awful do, to do, each do, other. Do, do, do. <laughs> Sorry. No. Why 2019? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't understand. And then there's like, there's as much hype for this new season of Game of Thrones as there is for like a Star Wars movie. It's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. But um, let us uh, yeah, let I mean, us move on <laughs> to our number twos. Number two, number two. Ah, okay. So we talked about this before. Yep. We're gonna talk about it again. I feel like it. Uh, Get Out is my number two you get film out, of the year. Uh, <laughs> um, Bad joke. Yeah. <laughs> LOL. Uh, get Out. Get Out is well, like Shane said, it's a powerful movie. It's powerful in a couple different ways, depending on what kind of movie you think that it is. It but it fires on any cylinder, including all cylinders. I think this movie. Um, has a lot to say, and it touched me on a personal level level for a lot of reasons. But then also, what it did is that it it made a mainstream ish movie an idea that was weird, and it made it thought provoking. And I like when movies do that. I like when when things are really like a really wide release movie, and it's like everybody's like talking about it, but everybody's like talking about something like really substantive and yeah. interesting. And I think. Man, I have so much to say. And the way that Jordan Peele like wrote this film, there, there's so many interesting things. Cause I want to like, write a movie one day, and there's so many interesting things that he we does. do, and, and, and we do. Um, he every single gun that he that he sets up goes off perfectly. Um, another thing that he does in this movie is that. He plays the the scene that Shane was talking about towards the end. There, there's a little bit of twist. Wow. Oh, I did God. not see that coming. And it and then it just kept getting and then something else happened and there's only this like the last fifteen minutes. Like I haven't seen this kind of level of tension since like Sicario. Yes. Like, <laughs> like this scene, the tension building up is almost unbearable mm. at moments where it's just like Holy yes it, it, it's it's uncomfortable and it's uncomfortable for all the, the right reasons it's, yeah. it's uncomfortable because kind of like in shape of water there are certain things that people don't like to talk about or think about or characters themselves who are kind of like uh are kind of like us the audience or us like the society kind of like tanya i tanya did it or whatever um it makes you have conversations and do things in a certain way because it seems like it's kind of crazy and over the top but really at life stranger than fiction it's also kind of like that too mm-hmm. the sunken place um let's see the actual thing that's going on in the movie uh how people talk to each other in a weird way race relations stuff there's which 
If you think that's not an issue anymore, let's be real. Then please watch Three Billboards and let your mind it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this movie, the Fantastic Movie, I was watching, uh, I was watching the um, the Cinema Sins for it, and it, it had been a while since I saw um, another cheap plug. Yeah, another cheap plug. Awesome. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen No Simpsons, are please watch it. It's fantastic. It's like honest Shirley stuff so longer um, and a little bit more mean spirited, but in a funny way. Um, but I think that it. I've never seen one of the one of their uh, his videos, the Cinema Sins videos, take off as many sins as it puts on. Just because this movie is great. This movie is great. I think that uh, Jordan Peele wanting to do uh, what was it uh, like a new kind of Twilight Zone. It's a fantastic movie. This, this move. feels like <laughs> this feels like Twilight Zone, Black Mirror. Yes. Like. Crazy, limits. crazy shit. Yes, like this movie, this movie is a fantastic movie. It is meant for everybody, everybody. Every, it is not a movie for one type of person or one type of like political leaning or way of thinking. It's great, you know? It's great. Now, we're getting real close now. So this is my number two. And this is probably not going to pop up on a whole lot of people's number two list but also I love westerns and this is a really cool modern western and this is Wind River and Wind River is written and directed by Taylor Sheridan and Taylor Sheridan wrote Sicario, wrote Hell or High Water, wrote this and is now writing the sequel to Sicario, Soldado and honestly he's one of my favorite screenwriters. He captures different aspects of our country in such interesting ways that it feels like one of my favorite things about film is being transported somewhere else and going to a different world, which is why I love science fiction and fantasy. He does that, except in our own world, and takes you to places that seem so out there and so interesting and different. And this takes place on a Native American reservation, reservation in Wyoming, and a young woman is found frozen to death after running like five miles in the freezing weather barefoot. to her barefoot to her death. And you have Jeremy Renner, best he's ever been in this film as a hunter who's helping a very green FBI agent played by Elizabeth Olsen, MCU reunion, and trying to help her figure this out. And this film is brutal. I, my jaw dropped and stayed dropped for the last half hour of this movie, and it is so intense. This film never lets up its intensity and really puts you in a place where it's like, you're really grinding in watching this film, and all the way to its climax, and also has one of the best kind of climaxes of the year, and is really fulfilling and really digs deep in the idea of survival mm. and really working at the will to survive and what makes you a fighter and what makes you a not so strong willed person as well and I can't wait to see more Taylor Sheridan things because he's fantastic. No, uh, so a friend of mine, I hadn't heard about this movie until, uh, until like I think a day before that a friend of mine texted me and said, hey, you want to watch it? I was like, well, well, what, what's it about? I said, I doesn't feel like YouTube in the trailer yet. And then he said, well, it's it, it's it's sort of like Fargo, except it's it's like it's a new one. And I was like, what? It's, Brent it's, said it's, that. It's, really? <laughs> it is interesting. And I wouldn't quite say this yeah. is like a Coen Brothers movie. Uh, yeah, it's, well, unless it's No Country for Old Men. Yeah. But I think after watching it, like no, it, it it does. I think it does deserve to be in that same in that same vein as like a as as a detective story, yeah. as a story about uh, law enforcement, as a story about like people doing the absolute worst to other people. There's a scene, a very long scene, like a very very long scene, almost like a like a CSI or a long or SVU almost kind of situation. But it's uh. It is. It's one of the hardest things that I've seen this year. Actually, a couple other things that are hard in that movie too. Yeah. Some uh, something happens, and then the fall, there's fallout to what happens in the family involved. The her mom. Remember her mom? With the uh, yeah. 
I'd recommend it. I definitely recommend it. It's a good movie. Great movie. Great movie. Gonna get some awards, hopefully, or this guy's gonna be mad. Um, it's not, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> oh, he's made peeps with it. Okay. But yeah. No. Eh, I wish it would be like the Hell or High Water of last year, but I don't think it got enough attention to really hit that point. But. Soil bit. Soil bit. Soil bit. But, Matt, what's your number one? Can I get a drum roll, please? My number one, my number one has to go to Brad's status. That is a fantastic. And most of you are saying what? Yes. Oh. Is that? So Brad's status um, was so close. It was get out of Brad's status. Get out of Brad's status. So um, to where I, I went to, so he went to school for accounting. I went to school for psychology. And what I find really interesting about this movie is, um, as a current mental health practitioner, is I like the fact that. A movie. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna geek out for a second. Oh, he's here. going. Dude. <laughs> hey, I had my moments. You go right ahead. <laughs> um, let's see. I like the fact. I should have did a left, left Jedi with you. Uh, I like the fact that oh, um, <laughs> a, a movie that has so much inner monologue and narration um, to a point where I've never seen a movie that has that much like inner thoughts playing out in every single interaction. It's almost like the, the most neurotic person you ever met. It's almost kind of like a, like Woody, Woody Allen in the movie. Because he's so has, no, 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 no. <laughs> like he's so like hesitant and weird and anxious and over analyzing and consequently self-defeating. But he um he's such a very flawed character trying to traverse something that seems really mundane and first world problem E, which is He's going through the midlife crisis. He wants he wants everything that he is not. Everything that his his son is about to do. Uh, his son is a uh, uh, high school senior about to go off into college. He wants what his friends have, who have, uh, including Jermaine Clement. Yes, um, uh, all of his friends from college. At least one to know they are successful in a certain thing in their respective fields, but in crazy awkward and amazing ways and it's interesting because I mean I don't really think about it too much but this movie it kind of it makes you think it makes you kind of look back on your own friends and your own like people that you remember in high school and college and it's like I wonder like are they are they successful why are they mm-hmm. successful why do I care if they're successful am I successful to them am I successful to myself these are all the things that he is constantly asking himself and like like the, the standards that he's measuring himself by and the movie if it ripped out all of the uh, kind of the inner monologue stuff it would just be this dude that's awkward and not maybe not the greatest at always just going through stuff and it happens and the movie's over but with this the movie is, is almost like it's like a movie and a half because it's the story and then it's also what the character the main your main character is going through internally and I think that is the best movie of the year for me for me and the most beautiful thing is film is subjective and that's why we can have conversations and what connects with some of connects with us might not connect with everybody else but I think that's the best thing about film is having that conversation unless I say it because my opinions are objective truths always so <laughs> that's how opinions work right because the thing is out of all the films we've talked about, I think this one is where we're the furthest apart on. Because I thought Brad's Status was a good film. And if you go check out my review, you hear my full thoughts, but I know this one really connected with you. Maybe I'm going through a midlife crisis. Well, kind of early with it, right? Yeah, a little bit early. <laughs> but now, for my number one, and I don't know, well, probably people wouldn't be surprised about this, but of course it's science fiction it has to be and it's Blade Runner 2049 which I alluded to earlier when Matt said it was an honorable mention I'm like I'm gonna wait and we talk about that later because this is indeed my number one and I have to preface something so my biggest fear is machines and Matt knows because he's heard me go on like an hour and a half tirade about it don't don't start a conversation with me about the movie her It'll become very uncomfortable. And uh, this film, 
I don't think I've ever watched a film where I felt so much for a machine ever. Mm. And that means a lot to me because usually I hate them. And honestly, some of the big things. Hans Zimmer and Barry Walfish, I think his name is, or Billy Walfish, I apologize, people can correct me. The score in this is so intense and cool and interesting and different. And I'm I'm glad I got nominated at the Golden Globes and I hope it does at the Oscars as well because this score takes the original score of Blade Runner and then like adds doses of Hans Zimmer to like the blah, 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 and makes it really cool. If Roger Deakins does not win his first ever Oscar for cinematography for this film, I don't know what I'll do. I might chuck my notebook. That's what happened when George Miller didn't win Best Director for <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road. That'll probably happen. Because this is the most gorgeous film I've seen this whole entire year, hands down, no questions asked. The framing of everything, the production design, the colors, the everything, I think one of the most impressive shots of this whole entire and you see this in the trailer when they get to Las Vegas mm. for the first shot, and it's just Ryan Gosling in this cloud of orange dust and everything. It's just like just an awe. I would literally, t and we did a special countdown with our friend Vinny back halfway through the year. What our top five films so far of the year were, and in my, it comes at night section I talked about the best cinematography is when you can take something as a piece of art just a shot of a film and put it up on the wall you can literally take every single shot from this movie and use it as art it is that gorgeous I haven't even gotten to the story or anything like that Denis Villeneuve is such an amazing director and creates a two hour 45 minute epic masterpiece of a film that or, like there is literally a scene of two people, like a replicant and artificial intelligence making love to each other. And it was one of the most moving, unbelievable scenes I've seen in a film this whole entire year. It's like, oh, like, why do I connect with this? And I've seen some people bringing up like Pinocchio connections and stuff like that. And that's a, this whole entire film is. Like, there's the mystery, which I'm not spoiling anything. I'm not telling you anything about the plot of this film. Mm. Neither did the trailers. And unfortunately, that's probably why people didn't go see it. <laughs> but this film is about Ryan Gosling's character as a replicant, which the trailers didn't tell you that, but you learn in like, the first scene of the movie, so I'm not spoiling anything. Him trying to be, finding his place in the world, because... He is not, he's not a human, and him trying to find connection and his purpose, and that's what this whole entire film's about. And then you have the whole entire other crazy layers of themes of machines and what if machines can create life, more similar life. And that is so mind-boggling. This movie blows my mind so much and Ryan Gosling is so silent and stoic and tense throughout so much of this film just like in Drive mm. that there's a couple different kind of Ryan Gosling performances you got like the Drive and Blade Runner performances you got the Jacob from Crazy Stupid Love where it's like are you in a fraternity mm. why are you wearing New Balance yes it's yes. like come on your face is in my schwanz like stuff like that and but he's so intense in this. Robin Wright is great in this film. I need to watch rewatch Crazy Stupid Love. I love Crazy Stupid Love. <laughs> Favorite rom com ever. Yeah. Like <laughs> leaps and bounds. Favorite. Yeah. And um Robin Wright, sorry. <laughs> Robin Wright was great in this film too. Harrison Ford is the best I've seen him in like forever. Because you got him in Han Solo. Hmm. In Force Awakens, but
But in this, he reads some emotional moments, and the special effects in this are ridiculous. It's mind-boggling, and Jared Leto pops up it, it's a, sparingly. He pops up very sparingly, and he's magnetic and creepy and unsettling, and I forget the names of the two actresses who play love and joy mm -hmm. in this film, but they're both equally as powerful, whether it's emotionally connecting or intense and frightening, honestly. And Dave Batista yes. pops up in the beginning, and boy, is that this film opens up with like, bam, kind of scene, and this film takes its time. It does. It's sweet time. It's sweet time. It really does. <laughs> but you're brought along the whole entire way in so much beauty around you that I'm just lost in it. And that's what I have to say about Blade Runner 2049. Do you feel like people need to watch the original to watch this movie? I feel like you could watch this without the original, but watching the original make some emotional moments really more impactful and give you some more perspective. But I think Denis Villeneuve does a nice job of creating something that is different enough that you don't need the first one. Mm -hmm. You could kind of jump in and... Because it gives you the beginning explaining replicants and stuff like that. It's just... There's certain things... I would suggest watching it beforehand. I actually like this better than the first one. Mm -hmm. Which... I don't know. If you think that's sacrilege, you can get over it. Um, but that's how I feel. And those are our top ten lists. And this was fun. Thank you. And can I, I come back? Can I, can I come back, guys? Can I come back? I would love to have you back doing reviews and stuff like that. And Because the thing is, I do my reviews, and I'm trying to do some more special videos, which is a nice segue to wrap this up. So my next special video series, which will probably be filmed over one weekend and broken into pieces, is my second annual Wasteland Reviewer Awards, which is, I pick the nominees and the winner. So, it's really my thoughts on some of the big categories. Mostly all the main categories, except for the shorts, the foreign, film, foreign language one, because I don't see enough films to make a judgment on that and I also don't know really jack shit about uh, sound mixing and sound editing so I don't want to I don't want to be a jerk and make my judgment on that but so everything else all the other main categories and then I will do a video where the Oscars release their nominations and I make my picks mm -hmm. and then I'll have my third annual Oscar party sitting there waiting to see if what I wanted to win with but my hope is, like, I just finished up my top ten scenes in film countdown, which was awesome. Please go check out those videos, but I'd love to do more series, some other countdowns that I'm looking at, doing top ten science fiction films, top ten Coen Brothers films, because I could do a whole thing on them, top ten directors, and talking about their filmographies, favorite westerns, since that's another big genre of mine. I know I already did my top ten films, like, like going back and rewatching them and reviewing them, but those are some things that I'd love to do some more videos with Matt. Maybe we could come up with some cool ideas of special videos to do. Because honestly, we really went to town with Shape of Water. Yes. That was a really good one. But Matt, thanks for coming on to the Wasteland Reviewer. Thank you for having me. And please watch this video and check out the rest of my videos and keep on watching movies.